table here. And stepping up to the stream are two fantastic. We've seen them do amazing things just tonight alone. That's Maniac and NYU Mailman. Yeah, we've actually had players in bracket. I think I don't know if they were on stream, but there was a there's a player whose actual tag is Maniac. Uh, stop playing Ike. Play Wolf. <laughs> Because Ike sucks. Um, that their words the not full, mine. The full tag. For, full tag. Uh, <laughs> and are we supposed to shorten that to like Emernic? I don't know what the acronym would be. Yeah. Acronyms aside, we are gonna get the firing of a duo. And hey, Maniac is out here proving that Ike maybe isn't that bad. Who yeah, knows? I mean it's interesting because this is slow sword character versus slow sword character uh, to the point where I feel like they kind of dueling for the exact same zone and spacing. Maybe a little bit more range on Byleth, but uh, ooh. so uh, Byleth will actually it, it'll they will cover more they will cover better at longer and at theoretically close range thanks to Byleth Nair being so good out of shield and things like the forward air and back air covering that same space uh, for uh, for a longer range. Meanwhile, Ike is going to excel at that perfect mid range and has the speed at least compared to Byleth to do so. Yeah, especially with a dash attack like that. Quick burst option. If Mailman is not careful, he can get uh, just absolutely shredded in the mid range. And uh, with this lead, seems like Maniac is really pushing the advantage. <gasps> what was that? Uh, that was a flub and a half. Getting hit, I assume, when they didn't expect to, combined with the fastball and falling even out of range to get the tether onto stage and hook yourself up. Either way, Mailman is going to need to... is plenty to clean up, but plenty of time to do so. As in top eight, we are in best of five territory, but yep. you've got to at least prove yourself that you can get a stock here, or else Maniac's going to run a train. Now, now, one of those things that is really nice in top eight is you get to see adaptation. Specifically, what I'm looking towards is the edge guarding. Ike is a character that can be messed with off stage. By left, it's a little bit trickier to deal with, but sure. as we move on in the set, I'm really... Looking forward to what Mailman can show once he puts him off stage and has learned his habits. And here's where we're starting to see it. Ah, that's not the best edge guarding option, getting hit by side B. Yeah, maybe looking for a parry there in order to try and find a, like a forward tilt or something. But that, oh, not going for it. Instead, trying to wait for an air dodge and hello, edge guarding. Well, goodbye, there, Ike. <laughs> there you yeah, have it. And I will say, as far as characters that can make comebacks happen, Violet at 118% is really dang scary. Yeah, this is like one uppy in the corner at give it like 15 or 20 more percent. But that ether with the buffs it has, goodbye so long. I'll see you again next game. I, that was good DI. Like, True. he died off of the side instead of off the top. So you know that he got the optimal angle, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, and we could get a look at the... Some of the runs that they have had. Now, for reference, also, uh, seeding did not matter because it was random, Smile. Um, so these two were able to power through a straw Maniac being able to get wins on Sourdough, the uh, Zelda, uh, Projo, Toon Link, and King, notably as a Pokemon trainer, while Mailman would took it took over. Out Mars the Journey. Took out, yeah, Mars the Fernie. And uh, Cars the movie, my favorite. <laughs> Cars the movie. I think I saw Nixio around. <laughs> Uh, so they've each had respectively like really solid runs to this position with a total randomness of who they were got by luck of the draw. And here they are running it straight back to Battlefield, which I 100% agree with. Uh, Byleth on Battlefield has access to a lot of variety of up B confirms rather than just the normal DI check, or rather the 50-50 whether you get up air or uh, back air. You can instead really play with this top platform if you get into range, but uh, you also got to be in range in order to snap to ledge like that. And Maniac is really showing a very good sense of advantage state in these first two games. Yeah, I was saying before how, oh, it should be Ike, the one getting edge guarded, but we're kind of seeing you go both ways. If anything, more co Oh my god, hold on a second. You know, I, that's exactly what you were talking about <laughs> yeah. with those battlefield platforms. What is happening? Okay, like. So just don't SD. Okay, we, we're here to learn. We're here to learn. And I think rule one that we've learned today is SDs are bad. <laughs> Agree? Now, Agree? Now, I don't know. I don't know. It's, maybe he's playing the long game. Fair. All right, I'll give it up. You know, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. Oh, oh, yeah. All right. We still air dodge those at the very least. And I mean, we did see a clutch edge guard in that last game. It was kind of too, a little bit too late. Uh, and as. 
This is the kind of point where an edge guard just like that with a you know quick nair off stage will be an equalizer that could matter, but he has to find it first and look at the advantage state maniac. Even when he's doing these juggles, he's not finding himself overextending and getting hit for it, which is really important, especially in a matchup like this, where getting put above either of these characters is a miserable situation. Absolutely. Finally getting some of those stalls right. I like the ledge play. Gets down to oh he has the DI right, but just barely missing the up air after not getting a fastball in time. The side B comes in to cover that center stage space. And now you need to garner not just the stock here, but a lot of momentum. But that dash attack was such a quick burst option from Maniac. It's another one of those. But it's not enough, but there it is, finally cleaning it. And oh boy, 125% is very similar to that first game. And just like the first game, comeback just not quite able to happen. Think about the two moves that killed. In game one, it was the upbeat, a really fast out of shield option. In game two, it was that forward tilt, also a really fast option. That's one of the hard things about making a comeback against Ike. He has so many kill options that just are there for him, just for so sure. accessible. Just instant access to, oh, he's side B, he down beat up with the tether. Interesting. Uh, Shane, sad but true, I just find this uh, sequence interesting, and we're not going to be able to really go in deep into it because the game is starting. But it's interesting to see that how Mailman, despite not when unpressured, hasn't been selecting a lot of these panic options and instead has gotten fancy with movement, arguably too fancy. Uh, but the fact that they are so quick to roll when under any amount of duress is something that Maniac should keep in their head, assuming that they don't burn their jump mid-combo. Uh, Just because this is Arcadian <laughs> does not mean uh, this you, are spaghetti spaghetti <laughs> you are permitted to do that. I disagree. Um, and so that's a... This is a big lead for him, and one for thing sure. we haven't seen is him playing with a lead. And Violet is a character that has the range to keep opponents out, especially if the you know you're guaranteed to know that your opponent is forced to approach. Absolutely. They, oh, that uppy was certainly risky. I'd mm. Yeah, tried to land aggressively with Nair. It looked like instead of trying to get to the platform. We haven't seen Maniac attack the vertical all that much, except for out of a combo finisher. So the uh, recoveries to platform might be a little bit more accessible, though it's understandable if you don't want to try and mess with Ike yeah. out there. Oh, that was so good being able to parry that. I was just about to mention that Maniac has opted to use a lot of forward airs and neutral airs at the moment. Forward no air jump. when forward air is just the peak. And, ooh, okay. And neutral air when he finally closes that distance. The spacing right now is immaculate from him. And another that up air to the very back part of that swing is what takes out Mailman's second stock. He looks like he's on the cusp of dropping in a 3-0. Oh! That was pretty nice timing on the part of Mailman, seeing that Maniac went for the Aether early and adjusting his angle accordingly. Similar to how um, Maniac was able to get that up throw and seeing how Mailman was just like going for a lot of drift, not quick to burn their air dodge. It's like, all right, then this up air is a free conversion. Oh, gets into the grab. It's funny at the beginning of this. Oh, up throw. It would have been sick. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it didn't work, it would have been sick. It could have done up throw, up beat, dumb stuff. It would have been, <laughs> been awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. You know, earlier. You were mentioning how, oh, the close range could actually be good for Byleth, and that's what Mailman has focused on. He's getting into his own and neutral airing. Right. He's landed seven neutral airs, I think, in the, just the stock alone. It's And it yields so much. So I like this sort of change in direction, this cha this uh, alteration of game plan, and will it actually guarantee the game win? He's on the cusp. It's almost about to happen, but can he close the deal? Yes, seeing how Maniac oftentimes challenged on this platform. There was a moment, I think, in game two where the two of them just kind of traded and uh, Maniac was sitting on platform doing like, nair, nair, dare, dare on this platform and big auto cancel windows kind of lets him do that. Doesn't let you do that up against a big up smash like that, especially when prepped accordingly. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a little adaptations like that, but those adaptations can really matter. Yeah, now I would like to sort of point out a trend that's happened in these past uh, three games. Go for it. Um, when one of the players dies at zero, they lose the game. True. So, um, <laughs> True. Uh, as we move into game four, right, so I wonder if one of them is going to realize that 
and stop SDing at yeah, zero. Sal saltine fun over here is uh, spitting. So, what if you just simply do not SD? <laughs> Could you just not? It's just for like just a, don't. For like three minutes. All right, just a forward throw, though. I Ooh. <laughs> spooky, spooky. And as he gets that runoff back air, that was so clean. And the tech chase with the error as well. All of this damage stacking up super quickly. Gets the troll. Oh, that was such a good trap. And getting the nair into lead slip forward air. Mwah. And I, he's Boy. been looking for that up the side B onto stage for so long. And then finally Maniac gave it to him. And it makes sense in retrospect why he was trying to cover it. Because when he actually does manage to catch him, look at that conversion. I really like the. In I feel like that missed tech was intentional from Maniac because every time he teched, he would be getting grabbed in some work, plenty of time to react. Miss that tech though, you threaten get up tech, and that's so much more potent uh, when your opponent is just looking to tech chase you on these platforms. Just like when they're looking to get those jump nares out, meet them before the nair even comes. Back B, back air. Yeah, and we're kind of. It feels like momentum has shifted. Okay. Uh, it's hard, hard to really say sometimes that where momentum's going. I, I will just say, shifting in terms of the fact that I feel like games one, two, and for the most part of three, it felt like Maniac was just absolutely in control. And right now, he, it's not like he's sort of coming apart at the seams, but definitely Mailman has come alive in a totally different way, and it just seems to be working out for him right now, actually. Trapped in the corner, struggling to find his way out, and I don't know what. That DI was just barely out of range for the up B, and that's going to really, really cost, because once more he has to find a kill instantly, because Maniac's been just really reliable about getting damage at low percents. I think that down tilt into up air is going to do it, but I really think that Mailman is going to need to try and be a little bit more... Uh, a little bit more aggressive onto ledge here. Like, we saw a couple of side Bs. Oh, that's a dead Ike, by the way. Yeah, and taps him just to be sure. I kind of agree, but I also don't, because keep in mind that the last two stocks he got, um, or stock one and stock two, were from those side Bs onto stage. Yeah, that's what I mean. Differently. Like, it's oh, aggressive. Okay, so not, like, okay. we've seen some of those side Bs, but I don't agree with uh, side B stalling. I mean, in terms of getting back to, getting back onto stage. Like, if we just, just pause here to use it as a means of corner. Like, going from the corner here and jumping back on with forward air or for uh, for a case, or doing some of the the fancy stuff they were doing before with tether cancels, like, that's that's going to be much more effective given the spacing that Maniac has been kind of standing at. Mm. Well, Finally, actually, I, pretty cool. We get to game, have a game five. I thought this was going to be a 3-0 and a handshake, but... Definitely Mailman having figured some stuff out, and it seems like those lessons are con- Oh! I thought we were going to see some real sick movement right there, yeah. but... I, I mean, a fan. nonetheless, 97% and oh, if he had air dodged down, that would have been the death of him, but... I, we're starting to see a lot more air dodges. The panic, the fear has finally entrenched its way into Maniac's brain, and Byleth is one of the characters that will take that as far as possible. Wow! Only 68%! This is looking maybe the best he's done the entire out of all four games we've seen. Yeah, kind of biting himself in the toe as well. Fine. Seeing the air dodge from Mailman, though, an air dodge for an air dodge in a lot of these ways. A lot, some of the pressure that Maniac has been, or Mailman has been putting on, was from um, Maniac air dodging. Gets one in turn. A couple nares coming out. A good trade, though, with that forward tilt, though. Have to be careful with just how often he's been throwing around nair, especially with some of these jump from ledges, because that's where Maniac's been throwing a ton of forward airs. Ooh, very nice. Oh, he had that spot dodge, but just didn't quite punish it. And now, okay, we're starting to see that. It's so hard to know. There's no point at which the control feels completely cemented. They'll manage to have a good string of hits, but then as soon as it's broken up, the other player will just take them for a ride in return. Ooh, even parry on the nair wasn't enough for dash attack. Oh, down a uh, nair into up air, and the DI was hard in, making that much scarier than it could have been. Another side B, though, gets them by. Mailman still cementing a pretty solid lead here. That should be it. Yes, it is. Even Byleth can reach that top platform, given how much long of an end line Aether has. And there was also such fantastic baiting. The bait back to knowing that that up B was what he was looking for in the corner. And 
with this. Let's see if he can take this again. The dash attack survives that time, but that's how many times has he gotten dash attack on landing? I think it's four or five, and there another attempt at a side beat, but instead of re-grabbing the ledge, just trying to push forward, that's where I feel like you need to start mixing in some of those fares there. No jump mm. to be had. It resets with the Nair going deep, but no, didn't land on the platform, didn't get the fare out in time. Yeah, okay, fair to, full hair of his own, but Mailman, what oh, was that to Oh, and the panic of seeing, seeing yourself land on the platform like that, seeing the opportunity to extend here, find a grab, find a forward throw, get that town and city juices flowing, and you overextend once and eat a huge Ike back air after yeah. such a strong start. And also, I wonder what if he's, that, that feels like he must have been DIing to the right. Yes, he, I, he just yeeted out of that game. I mean, I mean, I don't know. Town and City is not forgiving. So I, if we get a replay, oh, this was this one. I love that. Oh, can we can we go back for just a bit? Uh, to this, yeah, this one here. So, uh oh. Uh, okay, so let's just let's just. I, my controller. Is the console working on your side? No. Console's not working it's on not working side, on my side either. Sorry. Okay, okay so All we right, will well, just simply move on through well, some of these The point replays. is, it was really cool. He baited him with the forward air and then faded back. Neat, neat, neat. Um, but let me just see this final stock because I, I he was at 61. I know. I want to zoom to in it. on the DI line, but yeah, they were yeah, both playing a little fast. Still, so he was still in lag. Yeah, so he's going the for the standing grab. Yeah, it was actually a really solid choice overall, right? I, to see this Nair here and then oh. trying to, try, not even going for a dash grab, like going for a standing grab, but that he had to have been trying to like dash forward, buffering a forward throw, could have been I, many things. Possibly. I mean, I think that that was one of those situations where you really want something and uh, you tunnel into it. I feel like there should have been enough time to react that the grab wasn't the right call. Like, he had already Probably. jumped by that I mean, time. Ike back air is one of his quicker aerials, but it's not, like, fast. Well, I, I feel like he was already above him by the time right. he was, like, going for that shield grab. Uh, remember, always watch your opponent. Let's see this. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe okay. maybe it was just, like, a good read uh, to go for the jump in that position. It's hard to yeah. say. 